In this video, we're going to focus on solving problems associated with spherical mirrors. So in this example, we have a 5 centimeter tall object, and it's placed 15 centimeters in front of a concave mirror. Now this concave mirror has a radius of curvature of 20 centimeters. Where is the image located? So let's draw a ray diagram. So this is the shape of a concave mirror. A convex mirror looks like this. And let's say this point here is the focal point. So the distance between the mirror and the focal point is known as the focal length. Now let's place the object beyond the focal point. And DO represents the distance of the object from the mirror. So let's draw a ray diagram. This here is the principal axis. And so we're going to draw a ray from the object to the mirror and then towards the focal point. And then we're going to draw a second ray from the object to the focal point towards the mirror. And then it's going to bounce back here. And so this is the location of the image. Now, let me redraw that better. Maybe my ray is not precise as it should be. So notice that we have an image that is inverted. And we have a real image because notice that the rays, the light rays actually converge at the image. If they appear to converge with dashed lines, it would be a virtual image. Now the image is not just inverted, but it's also enlarged as well. This is bigger than this one. And so if your drawing is not perfect, like mine's is not, you can tell if the image is going to be a large or not. You just got to compare the height of the image with the height of the object. And the distance between the image and the mirror, that's di. This here is do. And then, as you mentioned before, this is the focal length. So let's go ahead and calculate these things using an equation. So do in this example is 15 centimeters. The height of the object is 5 centimeters. The radius of curvature is 20 centimeters. So what is the focal length? You need to know that the radius of curvature is twice the focal length, where the focal length is half of the radius of curvature. So half of 20 is 10. Now let's use the mirror equation to calculate di. So 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 divided by di. So f in this example is 10. do is 15. di, that's what we're looking for. So at this point, I'm going to multiply both sides by 30 di. Because 15 and 10, they both go into 30. So what's 1 over 10 times 30 di? 30 divided by 10 is 3, so that becomes 3 di. And then 30 divided by 15 is 2. So this becomes 2di. And 30di times 1 over di, these will cancel, and we're just going to get 30. So now let's subtract both sides by 2di. So 3di minus 2di is 1di. And that's equal to 30. And so that's di right there. It's 30 centimeters. Now notice that di is positive. So that means that we have a real image. Now let's calculate the magnification. The magnification is negative di divided by do. So it's going to be negative 30 centimeters divided by do, which is 15 centimeters. So it's negative 2. Now, if the magnification that is the absolute value of the magnification. If it's greater than 1, then the image is enlarged. If the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, then we have a reduced image. So because it's negative 2, the image is enlarged. Now, if the magnification is negative, that means that the image is inverted. 
if the magnification is positive, the image is upright. It's in the same direction as the object. And so in this example, M is negative, so we have an inverted image, as we saw in the ray diagram. And because the absolute value is greater than 1, we have an enlarged inverted image. And this told us that the image was real. Now, let's calculate the height of the image. The magnification is also equal to HI divided by HO. So if you multiply both sides by HO, the image height is equal to the magnification times the height of the object. So the magnification is negative 2, and the height of the object is positive 5. So the height of the image is negative 10. So because the height of the object is positive, the object is going in a positive y direction. Because the image height is negative, it's going down in a negative y direction. So we can see why it's inverted. And so hopefully these values make sense. And by the way, for a concave mirror, the focal length is positive. For a convex mirror, it's negative. So those are some other things that you want to keep in mind. Number two. A 4 centimeter tall object is placed 5 centimeters in front of a concave mirror with a focal length of 10 centimeters. Where is the image located? So we have the height of the object. It's 4 centimeters. And the object is placed 5 centimeters in front of the mirror. So DO is 5. And the focal length is 10. So let's calculate DI first. So let's use the mirror equation, 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. So f in this example is 10. do is 5. So 5 and 10, they both go into 10. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 di. So 1 over 10 times 10 di, the 10s cancel, and I just get di. 10 di divided by 5 is 2 di. And 10 di divided by di, that's just 10. So let's subtract both sides by 2 di. 1 di minus 2 di is negative di. So if negative di is equal to positive 10, positive di is equal to negative 10. Now, because the di is negative, the image is virtual. So we have a virtual image. So that's the answer to part B and part A. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the magnification. So the magnification is going to be negative di divided by do. So di is negative 10 and do is 5. So negative, negative 10, that's positive 10, divided by 5, which is 2. So because the magnification is positive, we have an upright image. So it means the image is going this way, in the same direction as the object. Now, because the magnification, the absolute value, is greater than 1, the image is enlarged. So we have an upright, virtual, enlarged image. Now, the last thing we need to do is calculate the image height. So that's going to be the magnification times the height of the object. So it's 2, and then the height of the object is 4 centimeters, so the height of the image is going to be 8 centimeters. Now let's draw a ray diagram. Keep in mind my drawings are not perfect, so it may not be drawn to scale. So let's say that this is the focal length, which is 10 centimeters, and the object has to be placed somewhere in between. And let's say the center of curvature, which is twice the focal length, is there. So let's draw the first ray, which we're going to draw it from the object to the mirror and towards the focal length. And then the second ray, I'm going to draw it from the center of curvature to the object to the mirror and then back through this way. Now, on the left side, 
the rays do not converge, which means we're not going to get a real image. However, if you extrapolate these lines, they do appear to converge somewhere over here. Now keep in mind, I'm not using a ruler, so this is not drawn to scale. However, you can clearly see that we're going to get a virtual image because the rays appear to converge there, even though they don't actually converge at that point. And so where the light rays appear to converge, that forms a virtual image. Now notice that the image is upright which means that it's in the same direction as the object. The object is going in the positive y direction, and the image is facing the positive y direction. The second thing is that the image is enlarged. You can see that the height of the image is greater than the height of the object. And so you can confirm your answer with a ray diagram. You just got to get good at drawing these things. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.